Have you ever had those times in your life where it was totally awesome, but you didn't know it was awesome when it was happening? Yes. <laughs> when I was a kid growing up in Minnesota, we had these amazing family get-togethers. But I didn't know they were amazing when they were going on. See, my mom's side of the family was all musicians. And there was a lot of them. I'm talking aunts and uncles and cousins. Everybody crowded into the living room. There'd be tons of guitars. My mom was playing the piano. My cousin Larry was playing the bass. Everybody was singing. My grandma was playing the organ. My grandpa, he played the saw. <laughs> right? All of us kids, we'd just sit on the floor and sing harmonies and pick up a tambourine and make a noise with anything we could. Now, when all that was happening, I didn't really appreciate it. But now I'm so grateful because music became a source of joy and connection for me. It's funny, once in a while, a friend or a neighbor would stop by, and they'd notice my dad. be sitting all by himself in the corner in his lazy boy chair, just nodding, smiling, listening to the music, and they'd ask him, John, don't you play an instrument? And he'd give them his biggest grin. And he'd say, I play the radio. <laughs> <laughs> How do you create music? I mean, where does it come from? What is music? It seems like we focus on the notes. We so focus on the sounds first. I think we like to, t t we, t we tend to think music as just being a bunch of notes all put together. When I was a teenager, I started playing the bass, and I got really into jazz. And then it became all about the groove. And that's when I heard this thing that Miles Davis said. It's not the notes you play. It's the notes you don't play. And later on I discovered that French classical composer Claude Debussy said, music is the space between the notes. Now that got me thinking. Music is so much more than a bunch of notes. It's the silences, it's the rhythm and the timing of those silences. Everything you hear is birthed in silence. Every thought in your head has silence between the next thought. The words I'm speaking have silences between them. And it goes into our bodies as well. Your heartbeats are separated by silence. We inhale, there's a pause, and then we exhale, and there's another pause. We don't have one continuous inhale. Can you imagine if there were no silences in between the sounds? It would be this cacophony of noise and mayhem. Everything we hear is surrounded by silence. When I was 17 years old, I attended the esteemed jazz school, Berklee College of Music, in Boston, Massachusetts. And this was back in a time when car alarms made a sound something like this. And whenever one would, whenever one would go off, a group of us would rush to the window, and we'd choose notes to sing to form a chord around the car alarm. <laughs> this is sort of a smarty pants jazz spitting contest. And that's when I first learned that every sound is music. Every single sound. When I'm at home, I sing with the blender. I harmonize with the vacuum cleaner. You know that hum that your refrigerator might makes? You can sing with that as well. Now, back when I was a kid, my mom and I, we used to play this game to see who would laugh first from singing mundane conversation to each other. Good morning, Mom. What's for breakfast? Oh, hello, Cher. How about some cereal? Or you could have some eggs. Oh. Thank you, Mom. I think cereal sounds good to me. Now, before you think, 
think that that's some sort of Midwestern strange habit. <laughs> Let me tell you, archaeologists recently dug up a cave bear bone, which they believe was some sort of flute instrument dating back 50,000 years. And that's just one piece of evidence, of which there are many, that points to musical sounds as being our earliest form of communication. So maybe my mom and I were calling on our ancient DNA and we were just talking to each other in this early way. Or maybe we were kind of nutty. <laughs> Growing up in the 70s, one of my favorite bands was Led Zeppelin. Their singer Robert Plant said, alone, I'm nothing. Our lives are full of these highlights and lowlights. You can think of those as the notes, and the spaces in between, the stuff of day to day, those are the silences in between the notes. But together, all of that makes the music. And it's a lot easier to be present for the notes than the spaces in between. In the 80s, I was the bass player in a rock band named Vixen, and we were very fortunate in that we got to tour around the world and play to thousands of people every night. I loved it. I loved playing the gigs, I loved being on stage, I loved the photo shoots, the autograph signing, the hot lights, the dressing rooms, and definitely the highlights. Those were rocking out on stage to screaming fans. Now for most of that period, I thought life was all about the rock star moments. And that other stuff, like sitting in a van or a bus for hours on end and dragging myself through airports, dealing with days off in some sort of crazy, mindless way, even though I was appreciative of everything and grateful, I still felt like those were times I had to tolerate or find a way to speed up and get through them as quickly as possible so I could get to the next rock star moment. I remember this one day off in London and a fan offered to show me around. We ended up hopping on and off double-decker buses. We had lunch in Piccadilly Circus. We rode the subway and went shopping in Camden Town and ended the day by jamming on the piano in the hotel lobby. That was a meaningful connection. Making the music count, making your music count, is about making your spaces count as well. John Lennon said, life is what happens to you when you're busy making other plans. I've certainly spent a lot of my life looking and searching for the right chords and the right notes and the right sounds to create songs. But it's really about being fully present for both the notes and the spaces. As humans, we're made up of atoms, and atoms are 99.99999% space. We're surrounded by space. We connect in those spaces. And I think it's sufficient to say we're full of space. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do have these highlights, and you can think of those as the notes. But you get really busy hunting and searching and focusing on the next note and the next note and the next note. And then you're missing the song. Those jam sessions that my family had when I was a kid, singing with car alarms at Berkeley College of Music, hanging out with a fan in London, those were amazing spaces in my life. From our opening note of birth to the lingering sustain of our final note, there's tons of significant notes in between. Are you fully present for each one? Are you soaking in its full resonance and power? And what about those spaces in between? Are you just as present for the quiet silences as well? Because you are a musician and your life is your song my wish for you is that you will find your own beautiful music
Now, let's put some of these notes together that you've already heard. And I'd like to dedicate this song to my dad, who, if he was alive today, I would ask him to play the static on the radio. 